Hey everybody, welcome back to Real Maine Fishing. I'm the host Derek, and today we're gonna go over some more ice fishing things because we still don't have ice here in Maine. There was a little bit about a week ago, uh, this is December 10th, so about a week ago we had a little bit, I could see people fishing up north here and there. I'm right in central Maine, and um, I'm really big on safety, and the ice just wasn't showing me that it was gonna be safe enough. I got a family I gotta come back home to, Again, safety and education are a big thing in this channel. So I just want to go over some more ice fishing gear. Hopefully this will, you know, feed your guys' appetite for a little bit longer. I'm hoping with the weather that we have coming up that next weekend I can go out and find some ice. I even called Fort Kent, which is like the utmost point of Maine, and we had no ice up there. I called a bunch of bait shops. They're like, all the rain, the heat. I mean, it's been in the 50s this past week. So all the rain, the heat, it just decimated whatever ice we had. A lot of people, like I said, were fishing shorelines with brookies. The center of the water was still wide open, but there was three to four, maybe five inches. So again, basically this video is just gonna be going over some more ice fishing things, more ice fishing gear. Um, I'm gonna try to keep it not super lengthy. So we'll we just cover some new things that we got, some new things we wanna go over, my ice fishing stuff that I like to use and why I use it. One thing I know I'm gonna get asked a lot is what do you use for rods and reels? So I'm gonna go over those real quick. I don't have a ton of rods and reels. I found what I like to use and they've worked really good for me so I haven't really found the need to go out there with 16 different sets of rods and reels like a lot of those hardcore anglers do. Maybe someday I'll get there but right now I'm just trying to venture and cover a lot of other purchases that need to be covered. So. My basic reels that I use, I use the 13 Fishing Omen. This is a medium heavy rod. It's a 36 inch. It's really well balanced. I'm really glad that I got it. It's got the white tip on the end so I can see it better if it's, I'm using it as a dead stick. Um, it just helps visibility when you're looking at it. Uh, other than that, I've got a Fluger Monarch reel that I purchased for this. I don't know why I went with it. It was just kind of like a shot in the dark and I'm really glad that I went with that. Um, the drag on it is amazing. I like the feel of the reel. It's not too big. It's not gommy. It gets the job done. I've caught some real big fish with this, some big lakers, and I'm really happy with the performance of the reel. I lube it up every year, and it's got a, what is it, a 5, 4 to 1 gear ratio, 5.4 to 1 gear ratio. I usually put leaders on these. Uh, my leader's gotten down to about six inches. I need to replace it. I usually start with about 36 inches a leader um, in the beginning of every season, and that's just dwindled down because of all the changes I've done. I tie a lot of knots when I'm out fishing. I always carry spare leaders. I have them all set up, and as I need to, I can switch those out. When I tie them together, I usually go from a braid to a monofilament, and I use a uni to uni knot on those and I can show you guys someday how to do that knot. It's really strong. It's worked flawless for me. I've never had that knot break. But um, other than that, that's just a basic rundown of the Omen that I got from 13 Fishing. The other rod I like to use is from 13 Fishing as well and that is the Radioactive Pickle. This is, I mean all this stuff you can find at your Walmart, Dick's Sporting Goods, any place like that. But this has got a tickle stick on it and that's the actual name of the of this uh, 27 inch lightweight uh, rod. But what I really like about this, the omen is for my big fish. That's for my lake trout, that's for you know my northern pike when I go fishing for those. This is a lot more for my lighter fish, the perch, the crappies, um, anything smaller like that. Sometimes I've seen guys hook on to monster northern pikes with these little tickle sticks and it can get the job done, but I just watched a video on YouTube where there was a fight that happened. It went on for like an hour and 20 minutes, and they were just having one of these little things. So, yes, it does get the job done. I've seen people drag in monsters with these things, but it takes a long time when you're using four-pound tests like I do. You've got to tire the fish out. It's a lot of work. The drag speaks for itself. It does a great job. It's very fine-tunable. So I've really enjoyed it. It's actually got metal on it instead of plastic. So I really like that too, because I do use a nice rod case, but when they're out of the case and they're banging around and I'm switching things back and forth, they do get banged up. And this has been able to withstand all the punishment that I've put it through. 
Uh, it's just got a basic black Betty free fall ghost reel on it. The drag is really smooth. I like it a lot. If I set it light, it just, it, it's, it works great. I don't know how else to say it. Um, one thing I have noticed though, if you don't have it set just right, this little trigger right here, what this trigger is designed to do is when you pull it, it allows your lure to just fall down. It's like opening the reel on your open face reel. It allows it to free spool and it's pressure sensitive too. So if you barely pull it, it'll let a little out. And the more you pull it, the more it'll let out depending on your drag. If you don't know how to set the drag, that is kind of a pain because you can actually free spool this thing and it kind of becomes a mess. And you got to take this little nut off right here, pull your actual reel out and redo your line. Um, but other than that, once you get to know how to use it, it is an amazing tool. It has a little screw right here for drop speed. That's another part of making sure you don't free spool anything and create a big rat's nest while you're trying to fish. But um, if you know how to use it, this is an amazing tool. So I want to go over this. This is like I said, it's a, what is it, 27 inch? Yeah, 27 inch light rod. Tickle stick paired with the free fall ghost. And I don't know if you can see it in there, but right there, it'll show you that's the radioactive pickle. If you look it up online, I'll put a description in the details of this. So that's that. And I really enjoy that rod. For kind of like my junk rod, because I always like to have a rod that um, I can always use as a spare. This one's been tested a lot. This is the HT Neon Ice Extreme. I got it as a gift a long time ago and it hasn't broken. It, it's got really heavy duty eyelets on it. Um, that's another thing that I didn't go over. The Omen has huge eyelets, which I love because I actually use a braided line on that and the braided line can collect a lot of ice if you're fishing outside. If you're fishing in the shack, you don't get any ice on your line because it's heated inside the shack. But if you're outside, it gets ice on it and the ice does not get bound up on those giant eyelets. This, I usually keep, um, a monofilament line so I don't get a lot of ice build up on it and that's good because the eyelets on it are really small these eyelets are a little bit bigger they're really stout and rugged and I have zero problem with any ice build up even though I do use mono but if uh, I'm outside it's it's not a problem it's just a really great reel it came with just a basic HT Icelander uh, reel I keep a couple of these inside my stash just in case this does ever decide to break it's got infinite anti-reverse I really enjoy that too. It's a good function and it's just been an all around great rod. Got my first fish jigging off of this rod actually. I gotta replace that line too. But that's just the basic setup of the three rods that I use. I'm able to cover most species with these three rods. And like I said, someday I'm hoping to be able to get to a point where I can have just a whole bucket full of rods because that would just be cool. But um, in the meantime, those are that. All right guys, a lot of you that have been following my channel, you can see what this is on my first video that I put out. This is the Garmin Panoptics Live Scope system. I put it into a dry box and that is all gone over in a different video. So I won't really break this down very much. But one of the things I'm gonna be using this year is the Garmin Panoptics Live Scope system. And I've got the Garmin uh, pole mount that came with it. it just, I really enjoy the simpleness of that. I didn't go with our collab or anything like that. But again, I'm not gonna get into that because that's in a different video. Check that out on my YouTube channel if you wanna see that. This right here is the Aquaview Micro Revolution 5.0 Pro. It's the revolution part is on the back of it, you can actually see that everything's the cord for the video, it's all tied up back here. And with just a simple flick of a switch, you can let it out or pull it back in. It's got a little crank reel on the back too that popped out and it's really convenient to use. I've got a basic case that comes with it again it's, it's super basic I like basic but it makes it so that I can wear it on me I can wear it on my chest and I can look down and I can see what I'm doing I can see underneath the ice if there's any structure down there I can see basically anything I keep this on my boat in the summertime I keep it with me all the time in the winter time if I'm questioning something on the screen and I'm wondering what that might be on the bottom I stick that down it goes down about 60 feet It'll tell me the water temperature down there. It'll tell if it's all full color screen. If it gets too dark towards the bottom of the lake, I can switch on the infrared lights. And again, that's the Aquaview Micro Revolution 5.0 Pro. The Pro means that it has a built-in DVR. So anytime I see something, I can hit record, it stores it into a file, and I can look it up later. 
that is a super convenient tool. Everybody that ice fishes should have one of those because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of what's underneath the ice and what you're standing on. Next thing that I want to talk about are the traps that I use. I've used a lot of different types of traps and I really like the basic kind of tip ups that they have here. These are by Heritage. These are called the Heritage Lakers. They're pretty basic traps. I like them because these ones, um, I bought them painted black and it's really easy to see against the white snow. Um, orange flags, obviously I like those just because those are really simple to see against if they're on the tree line, you know, the tree line's green. Or if it's against snow, orange just sticks out a lot. I have contemplated going with different flags just because there's so many different cool flags out there. Um, I've always liked the pirate ship ones with like the skull and crossbones. I like the, I've seen people use the state of Maine flags. I think that's really neat too. Uh, but anyways, that's, I've got a bunch of spare flags and until those are used up, we're gonna stick with the fluorescent orange. The way that they do these, the, these are the plastic reels which I didn't think I would have liked, but they worked really good. So I'm gonna stick with the plastic reels for now. I have a, a pack basket with a protective sleeve that all these didn't go in individually so they're not banging around. But um, I have a cork ring on them. The cork rings that come with these things, they stick when it's warm, but when it gets freezing cold, they don't stick worth junk. They're just, they just don't stick. So I have a bunch of extras of those. I've tried using different adhesives, this one is actually Gorilla glued on, and I've had good luck with that, but I will see this winter how this actually works out. Um, the one thing that I noticed is the there's a wing nut on it. So if you take the wing nut off, there's a brass star nut. The brass star nut is uh, pretty smooth, comes off pretty easily. I have noticed that when you use these for an entire winter, what happens is they start to corrode a little bit. I don't know if it's because of the brass that these are made out of. Um, they're, they're definitely made out of brass. But um, you get the green filament that starts to chalk it up a little bit. And when these star nuts, when they first come out, the underside of them have burrs on them. So I like to go over this underside part of the nut with a small file and I get rid of the burrs because those, these star nuts are designed to grip a ring that is made of plastic. Um, the, it's a great design, but what you have to do is you have to go over these with a wire brush every year because they're made of brass and they corrode. Um, the other thing is you gotta go over these with a file because if the file grabs this, as it unreels, it tightens the nut. As you tighten the nut, this is your drag. And as your drag tightens, the fish can't go anywhere. Um, it doesn't really give you an element of surprise by the time you get to your hook. If you have something smash your line and try to take off with it, and all that happens is, let's say the fish hasn't completely swallowed the bait yet. Let's say the hook might not even be in the fish's mouth. It's just kind of gumming it, for a lack of better terms. But uh, it's, it's really important that you file down those star nuts. Uh, Heritage Tackle, if you are listening, um, there's a problem with the design. It needs a little bit of tweaking. If you want me to come down and file down all the star nuts, I have no problem doing that. But anyways, um, great design all in all. I've really enjoyed these. The seals on these that keep the lubrication inside here um, work great. I haven't had any issues with a lot of wind flags. Uh, wind flag is basically when there are really high winds and the wind will trip this. Pretty simple, but the wind will just trip it. It's kind of hard to explain, but uh, either way, these are the Heritage Tackle uh, Lakers. Heritage Lakers is what they call these. Uh, they are expensive. I can't remember exactly how much we paid for these, but I know between two sets, so a set being five, um, so five of these, five for my wife, after the line and everything, you know, we were $700, $800 deep, but um, they are great. I do enjoy them. They're a good setup. Before I actually say we're done with this, I wanted to go over line, putting putting the right line on this. I decided to go with, it's a 30 pound test. It's made by Beaver Dam, but it is a P3 
PVC coated. Oh, look at that, see? The cork thing's coming off already, and all I'm trying to do is get my line off. But, um, yeah, I'm just, like I said, not a fan. Anyways, what I decided to use, once I get past my leader here, all right, this, do you see the problem? <laughs> this is a PVC coated, or some sort of plastic coated, braided line. It's extremely strong. There is no stretch to it. Um, and I love it for the fact that it doesn't collect a lot of ice. If it does collect ice, I can literally take my fingernail, drag it down it, and the ice breaks free from it because it's not stuck on all the braids from the braided line. The only problem with it is it has an insane memory. Look at those coils. You see the weight that I put on that? That's to help kind of drag it down a little bit. I actually have bigger weights that I use to put on the end before my leader, and that's how I solve this problem. I like the braided line, but this line, to have it so smooth and the ice not stick to it, I'm kind of deciding whether or not I want to battle with it. I figured it out though with the weights. If you have the weights, it pulls it down so that it's not all coiled up. If you don't have weights and your fish that you put down doesn't want to sink down to the bottom, this is an absolute nightmare to deal with. Um, again, this is Beaver Dam line. I don't think I'm going to change it because I spent more than I should have on it. So we're just going to keep using the Beaver Dam line. I'm going to use the weights. I Like I said, I have like a 36 inch lead. This actually might be like a six foot, mm, oh, four feet, four foot leader on it. And I just put my fish on the end. But either way, that's that. I just wanted to touch over that. All right, next thing. I only got a few more items left. But the next thing that I want to go over is the new auger. This is the Ion Alpha Plus. I got it with the 10 inch blade. I got it, and it also came with two batteries. Sorry, I had to burp. Maybe we should start over. All right, guys, this is the Ion Alpha Plus. I got it with a 10 inch blade and two batteries. And I can't wipe the smile off my face because I am super pumped about this. Um, uh, previous years, I used a six inch auger. Super lightweight. I absolutely loved it. I had zero issues until I couldn't fit a fish up through the hole. And I lost the what probably could be the fish of a lifetime. Um, the lake trout, its head would not fit through a hole this big. This big. I, I was so mad. Anyways, that's a story for another time. But again, this is the Ion Alpha Plus. It's a whole new design from the whole head all the way down to the blades. The They actually went with an enclosed uh, handle. It's metal, which I really like. They actually put a battery guard on it this time. This one comes with 40 volt Gen 3 batteries. This is a four amp hour battery, and it has a really unique locking system to allow you to pull it in and out. The auger has little uh, bars to tell you how charged the battery is. They claim that this thing will eat through 2.2, up to 2.2 inches of ice, um, and I think it's like 1,200 feet per battery of ice? That's insane. So I am excited about this. It has a basic forward forward and reverse switch so that you can flush your holes out this is super convenient when you are inside of your ice fishing shack and you don't want water to go everywhere as soon as you break through when you're going forward you can hit this flush the hole downward by using reverse and it works out great they keep a little um a nice allen key that's the word i'm looking for there's an allen key on here that they made a specific spot for because that's the size Allen key that you need to take the head off of the auger bit. So I really like that idea. It's pretty convenient. It's super light. I weighed this thing in at, I think it was 17.6 pounds. That's with the battery and the actual guard for the blades. I'll show you guys the blades here in a second. Um, basically all to use it, all you need to do is you pull a little trigger here on the bottom and then you press the top just goes but 
one thing that they did, and I don't know if they did this in the Gen 1 or Gen 2s, uh, I don't know if I told you guys, this is the third generation that they've come out with. The button is digitally proportional to how you push it. What that means is, if you press it down a little bit, it drills slow. The harder you push it down, the more you use, it's just like a throttle. It's like a, if you wanna start off little, you just barely push it. And I mean, you can, this thing will barely spin. It'll slow right down to borderline nothing. And as you push it, it'll spin faster and faster and faster. The blades here are made of composite. That is the whole plus thing, the Ion Alpha Plus. If you get a plus, you're gonna have composite uh, flutes, not blades, flutes. So I'm really excited about that. If they do get ice build up on them, all you do is you can flex them a little bit and break it right off, pound them, and break them right off. And you can't do that with metal. They did put a light underneath it. So that light, I kind of like the Strike Master's idea of having lights on both sides, but we'll see how this one works. I've used it in the dark and it works pretty darn good. I don't know how the camera lens is gonna adjust to, to this, but these blades are insanely sharp. These are called the Turbo Blade Cutting System. This whole black piece here is composite. It's not metal at all. The blades extend just past, that's the tip of the blade right there. It extends just past the actual composite here, it's meaning making it able to go right through. But I don't know if you can see, there's so many different cutting angles on this thing. It's kind of a weapon of some <laughs> sorts, but the blades are extremely sharp. I gotta maybe come around so I can show you guys what I'm talking about here but you can see the edges here there's multiple I don't know if you call them facets or not but there's multiple edges here look at how aggressive that is I'm trying to get the right angle look at that that is insanely aggressive for an auger so this thing I've seen a lot of videos on it and I know that I'm gonna be extremely impressed with it when I use it because everybody else is, but like I said earlier, we have not had the cold temperatures that we have needed. Today is much colder, so I'm kind of excited about that. And I don't know if you guys have noticed how I've just been kind of picking this thing up and throwing it around. There's nothing to it. Like I said, this is the 10 pound auger and it weighs 17 pounds. It's, it's unreal. I'm really excited about it. I will do more reviews on this once we get ice. But that is the Ion Alpha Plus 10 inch model with the turbo blades and the two batteries. It also comes with the charger, which is pretty convenient. All right. Since I upgraded the auger, I had to upgrade my scoop. Usually upgrades come with required upgrades. And that's just how it goes. But anyways, this is made by Deep Freeze Fishing. You can find these on deepfreezefishing.com. This is the 10 inch hole version. This is made for a 10 inch auger. Basically, all you do is you stick it in the hole. Once you get below the bottom of the ice, you just turn it and then you lift it up out of the hole. If you lift it up out of the hole, all the slush stays on top. You move it off to the side and you dump it. And that's it. Your hole's clean. Sometimes you gotta do it maybe two or three times but if you do this slow enough, it's good. Um, it catches everything. Even these little holes here, they have little, uh, I call them little blockers. I don't know really how to explain it, but um, this just keeps small pieces of slush from falling through the holes and ending back up in your hole, so you have to clean it again. They're really rugged. Um, everything's made of steel. This obviously is made of uh, some sort of polymer plastic. But to clean it off, if you ever get frozen pieces of water on here and it's not draining very well, you just pick your shoe up and on the bottom of your shoe, you just give it a couple taps and you're good to go again. So this has been a great thing. Again, this is by deepfreezefishing.com. This is the 10 inch version for all 10 inch augers. And it's a, it's a great design. I used my six inch one for years and I think this one's gonna be with me for years to follow as well. Next thing I wanna talk about is the Vexilar LPS-1. This is a LCD portable sounder. A lot of guys, what they used to use, and a lot of times guys still use them, my best friend still uses them, um, is that little weight that clips on to your jacket, it clips on to your line, and what you do is after you drill your hole, you take that sounder 
and you clip it onto your hook or whatever you want to hook it onto and you let it down once it finally hits the bottom your rear will stop spinning and then you pick it up and you measure out the footage and then you can see what depth of water you're in roughly um, a lot of guys use the sonars um, their their garments their vexillars their markums you know the low rances all of that and they just put the sonar down there and they can see how deep it is with this all you do is you take it you stick it so that this top well this bottom part right here is underneath the surface of the water it just has to break the surface of the water you push the button down you let go and then when you look at it it'll tell you this isn't giving an accurate reading because it's not in the water but it'll tell you how deep the water is how cool is that it runs off a nine volt battery and it shuts itself off automatically but what I do is when I get out on the ice and I want to find let's say a shelf I'll drill a bunch of holes I know that there's supposed to be a shelf around somewhere I'll drill a bunch of holes and I'll walk around and I'll put this in a hole and I'll be like oh that's five feet go to the next hole oh that's five and a half feet go to the next hole that's 16 feet okay so I'm on a shelf right here and I'll put a trap right there on the shelf maybe I'll keep going and I'll see oh that one's 18 feet oh the shelf's still going down and then let's say I hit 20 feet and then 20 feet again and again I'll know that I'm at the bottom of the shelf and I'll place another trap there because I'll believe that right on the bottom part of that shelf there'll be fish suspended or hanging out in that area so this is a really easy tool to be able to quickly calculate your floor of the of the lake or pond or wherever you're fishing it's a great tool um, they have excellent customer service my first one that I had uh, water just built up on it over time and I went to go push it and this top snapped off um, I called them up they immediately I uh, had to leave a message they immediately called me back I got using a uh, email and with the couple emails go by and they said we're so sorry about that we stand behind our product they sent me a brand new one um, I'll put this in the link as well I can't remember how much they are I don't know if like 150 bucks or something like that but this is a really cool tool that um, a lot of my friends see and they go out and they get themselves one when it comes to going up north and doing huge expeditions and week-long ice fishing trips if that's what you're into which I love doing um, safety is a big part of that you really have to know what you're getting yourself into you have to have the gear that's required to survive up there and one thing that I never felt fully comfortable with was knowing where I am at all times yes I know how to use a compass um, yes I do have a cell phone but I don't have what I feel um, is enough so I decided to get the Garmin GPS map 66i this is making me feel a lot more comfortable when I go up in the middle of nowhere and with this channel I will be going up more than I was especially with the fact that I'm gonna be going up there alone and this just gives me that peace of mind that I need I route my maps on this so I'm able to hook it up to a computer download images bird's eye view images and route my plan so that when I get up there I can use this and I'll know where I'm going on the snowmobile trails and on the hiking trails that it takes to get to the places that I'm going to be going the SOS button is a big feature that I'm really excited about that I'll finally have um, if I ever do get in a predicament that I stumble into not knowing that there was danger involved this button could potentially save my life someday uh, I don't plan on using it because I think ahead as much as I possibly can but if I ever need it it is there the biggest thing that I like about this is the in reach function it has an iridium uh, what is it? iridium network is what they call it and this is going to allow me to use the in reach function so that I can text family members I can text people um, two-way messaging if someone else has one of these but I can use it to contact my friends and let them know that everything's going good um, I can text my wife at home see how my kids doing see how she's doing it just it gives me comfort so these are not cheap I will put this in the comments down below or the description and I'll link this in if you guys want to take a look at that I suggest you do so it will really 
just, just makes me feel better that I have it. Um, I'm still learning how to use it. The guy that I normally go with, he usually leads the pack when it comes to navigation, but if anything were to happen to him up north, I don't know how I would navigate out of where we get into sometimes. Um, you just, sometimes you're just so excited when you're traveling down the trailhead to go where you're going. You're not even paying attention. You're just following people and you're not really focused on realizing where you are. So this is a big asset and I'm really excited to have it. Okay, the last thing that I'm gonna show you guys is the new lures that I plan on using this year. I really feel like these are gonna become a confidence bait for me. Uh, so we'll get right into it. These here are the Level Head Predator Tubes by Northern Tackle. I've found that Northern Tackle puts out really good stuff. This, they say it's like a very good durable, I mean it seems, it seems pretty tough for a tube jig, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of stretchy and it's hard to find things that are lifelike feel, like feel like flesh, and also durable. So we'll see how this works when a pike hooks up to it or a lake trout, but mainly I get these for lake trout. Um, they're chartreuse. These were really difficult to find, but when I finally found them, I was very excited. They use a giant uh, giant uh, basic hook right here with a, with a barb on it, and then they have a trailer with a steel leader, uh, a trailer hook, treble. Trailer, treble, hook. There we go. Um, it's red, which I like using red hooks, and it's called the level head because the eyelet is right here. It's not down here on the end. So when it's jigging, it's not up like this. It's gonna stay like this. And as you use it, it's gonna make its way and come up with that kind of action. <clears throat> so I am excited about that. This is the chartreuse glow. And over here, you have the white with the chartreuse tip. And again, those are the level head predator tubes by Northern Tackle. I'm really excited about them. The weights are really heavy. And so that's gonna have a very aggressive drop, which I've learned works really good when it comes to fishing for lake trout. Sometimes they like the chase, and I think that's gonna give them a good chase for, for their money. Um, second, we have the new, this is made by Frostbite Fishing. This is the scissor kick. It has dual blades. It has one spinning blade on the front, one spinning blade on the back, and one treble hook on the back. This is again chartreuse, which is my favorite color to use when I'm fishing. Um, this is called Insanity Pepper, and they use a fluorescent orange with a sparkle all over it, and I think this is gonna be a great tube jig. They're not tube jig, uh, just a, it's kind of like a spoon, but it's really not. It's just a basic, it's just a basic jig and lure. Um, there's dual rattle chambers, so it's got a little bit of rattle to it, but uh, I am excited about this. We'll see how it works out. Next, we have the Frost, again, the last ones here, they're all from Frostbite Fishing. This is their dinner bell. It's the 3 8 ounce, and this is Insanity Pepper as well. It comes with a stout treble hook on the bottom. It looks like a really nice hook. I actually tried bending the hooks a little bit, and they're pretty stout, so I'm not worried about those bending on a hard hook set at all. Um, basically, all they do is they just cut out a piece of the, the spoon, and they loop it back in. And I, I do see here that the actual... Um, the loop is a little spread on it. So I'm gonna have to pinch that back together. Hopefully that zoomed in right because that will come off. So I'm really glad that I just noticed that. But uh, I, I, this is brand new, I haven't even used it yet. But the dinner bell is catching a lot of fish online that I've seen and I'm excited to use this. Next by Frostbite Fishing, we have the Tantrum Rattle Blade. Rattle tantrum rattle bait this is the frosty clownfish and it's i've never seen a color scheme like this before but from what i've seen this is turning into people's confidence bait online i've seen a lot of fish caught on these things and they have a very heavy rattle to them and i'm really excited to use it it's nothing like i've ever really fished with before when it comes to colors but it's working online, so I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm really excited about it. I'm really thinking that this is gonna turn into my go-to, um, just my my number one confidence bait, but we'll see. And I'm so interested into it that I bought the biggest one that they make. This is the Tantrum Rattle Bait Frosty Clownfish four inch model. This thing is massive. This is a meal for whoever wants to try to eat it. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear the actual sound that this makes, it sounds like a maraca. It's the loudest rattle bait I've ever had. Um, 
they do recommend that you use a big rod with this because whatever decides to eat this, you're gonna wanna get a good hook set on and you're gonna want your gear to hold up because if something is crazy enough to eat this, it's it's gonna be big. So I'm really hoping that uh, we've produced some good videos with uh, catching something on this. So that is not that easy to find. Uh, they run out of these a lot. So I'll link everything here in the description and you guys can make a decision on whether or not you want to pursue it. But I will show you catching fish on those, I guarantee it. Guys, that is basically another basic rundown of some extra gear that I wanted to tell you about before I go out. Um, if I tell you about the gear now, I don't have to go over such a descriptive video later when I'm trying to fish. So if I can just give you guys a basic rundown of uh, some safety items, educate you guys on what's out there, that's my main goal. Again, um, my name's Derek, this is Real Main Fishing, and I will see you outside.